Hey everyone, it's John here from Hot Hockey, joined by Jeff from Sports with Warbs. I'll leave his YouTube link in the description. Go subscribe to him, hit him up. Uh, okay. Leafs win 4-2, to two, and uh, he's an Oilers fan, I'm a Leafs fan, so I'm obviously a little more happy after Wednesday's game, I think, for both of us. Um, both teams didn't play well. Um, I'll just start off by saying, and Jeff, I, I want your thoughts here. I, I think both teams definitely played better. I, I think, like, from a, a standpoint of, like, Connor McDavid, you saw more from McDavid from like a standpoint of like the Leafs, like their top players, they played better. No Matthews tonight. That was kind of a big storyline coming into the game. Um, but even the goaltending, I think was a huge storyline coming into this game uh, after like kind of being a low scoring last game, like both goalies, I thought stepped out. Frederick Anderson for me um, was either my first star or like up there. Frederick Anderson had a huge game and uh, even Koskinen I thought played well, but uh, what were your thoughts kind of on this game, Jeff and the loss? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the goalies, keep on that theme. Uh, I thought, like you said, I thought they played pretty good. Um, I'm not, like, there was a couple shots, like, on Anderson. He robbed McDavid when he had a nice chance in front, usually. I mean, that could have been a goal there. Uh, he stopped that, and uh, kept, I think he kept the Leafs lead at that point in the game, so that was nice. Uh, the goalie let in. He let in the tip from McDavid, so you can't really get too mad at that. And even the, the game winner for the Leafs, was a, a nice shot from the point yeah. that got tipped as well. So I'm not going to blame – I'm definitely not going to blame Koskinen tonight. Um, yeah, I thought the goaltending was good. I'm happy with how Koskinen played. He's played playing much better against the Leafs than he did the first couple of games. So um, it is what it is on the goaltending. You know, it's uh, it's going to be a worry. Yeah, thought, it's going to be a worry every game. But. No, I agree with you. I, I don't think there's, like, a goal in this game where you can be like, oh, man, that, like maybe, like, one or two of them. But for the most part, when you're talking about tips, you're talking about, like – um, a cross crease from like, well, not cross crease, but cross in the slot from Nylander to VC. Like, even Costco made a good effort. I don't think you're blaming. Yeah, him plus you, you guys scored two goals on the power play, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to t blame the goalie on the power exactly, play. Exactly, exactly. I so. think, I mean, if you're looking at the Oilers and you saw it towards the end there, and I know we can all say like, okay, the Oilers wired all this passing. Like, maybe they made that attempt to tie it up late there, but why isn't the line change happening coming into this game? I mean, the Leafs kind of had to do it anyways. They made their line changes, but it was by just default because they didn't have Matthews, so they had to make the changes. Marner was with Tavares and Hyman. But for the Oilers, they don't make the change until what, like four minutes left? Tipping it's like a couple minutes left in the third period. Then they're putting Pugliarvi with McDavid to see if something changes. And it was a good move, too. I mean, Cassian, I mean, like, Cassian has just been so bad. Like, he's been bad. Like, I mean, there's – And Pugliarvi <laughs> serves kind of a similar role with the size as Cassian. Yeah. And, and, and with more actually capability to put the puck in yeah. the How and... many times have we seen McDavid pass to Cassian and he botches it? Oh, so many, dude. He was good for, like, like the one year, uh, like – uh, a couple of years ago, he was speedy and he was able to score. And then just since then, it's like he's lost his touch to score. But and then the other thing with Paul Yarby is he actually acts like he wants to be there, which is important to have on your top line. Like Cassie, and he'll just he'll like lose the puck and he'll just like glide into the boards trying to get it. I mean, we saw what happened last night when the uh, for the Matthews goal or two nights ago for the Matthews goal that was on Cassie. And at least Paul Yarby is gonna is putting like a hundred percent effort in like every play. So, I mean, yeah, all my notes here, I just, like, I go kind of, like, I go through the periods, and it's, like, McDavid buzzing at the start. The first period, I was pleasantly surprised with the Oilers. Um, they thought they played pretty good. Uh, Nurse was soft on the puck, but there wasn't a thousand turnovers like there has been in some of the other periods they played. But I just literally have here, like, McDavid buzzing, but Nuge and Cassie and just not putting the puck on his stick or not getting into the right areas. Moves down a little bit. Uh, Cassian still being careless, moved down a little bit more, and then it's finally Pugliari where you get switched for Cassian. So it was like a bi gradual build, and it's like it could have been avoided if, like you said, Tippett uh, decided to do that. I don't know. I well, guess just like – Yeah, I mean, at points in this game for both teams, I think in the first and that parts in the second, like just sloppy play. It was back to kind of that ping-pong hockey, like neutral zone – uh, in a defensive zone reset, neutral zone again, and then defensive zone reset for the other team. It was just like back and forth, back and forth, right? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, if I'm tipping, I'm going into next game and I'm going, okay, here, I'm giving an opportunity for both top lines. Like, why not just go into a game with Nuge, Dry, and Yamamoto to see if that line can spark things up again? And then it's Connor McDavid. Just put me, you know what I want to see, actually? This is not even a shot against Cahoon because Cahoon's played well. But I actually think Cahoon, maybe if he doesn't stay with the dry the line, like moving to the third line, I actually want to see Tyler Ennis back with McDavid. I don't know if you remember, but back when they acquired Ennis from the Sens, Ennis actually looked really good with Connor McDavid. 
And Ennis actually, I thought in his role so far, you know what? Maybe you have Cahoon up there if you bring, but I think bring back the dry center line, put Pujarvi on that McDavid line, and then on the left side have Cahoon or Ennis there. I think mm-hmm. you have to at least give it a shot. Bring back that dry set of line and see if they can bring back exactly what they're – they were the best line in hockey when they were together. I know. You have the other lines up there, the Bruins, Avalanche, all that. But in terms of, like, not the most skilled on paper – like, on paper, it's not the most attractive. But in terms of their production, like, one of the best lines in hockey. Yeah. And, I mean, and like you – like, I agree with that. Like, if you – it doesn't really – if you get – if you switch – I really just want Cassian off that first line. I don't think Nuge hasn't had a great start to the year. So, I think maybe reuniting it with that second line will spark him a bit. Put Puyarvi as the tough guy on McDavid's line. You know he's going to put a 100% effort in. Uh, it might not be the greatest line defensively, but if you can get someone who's decent defensively, Ennis, you know, he buzzes around out there. He's not the worst defensive player we have, uh, Katz Cassian or Larson. Yeah. But, yeah, so I think something like that's a good, a good idea. And, I mean, keep Neil in the lineup. Keep Chase on out of the lineup. I, Larson, like, oh, man, like, he, he, he was brutal tonight. I mean, ter- two turnovers led to the first two Leafs goals, so uh, that was awful. I don't care how much we're paying him if he's hurting us that bad and literally losing his games to take him out of the lineup. Um, the frustrating part for me also, I mean, it's always the shots. Uh, I kind of did a little timer here. I had a feeling that that, that, that when it was 2-2 uh, and there was 10 minutes left, and you said, like you said, they were playing ping-pong hockey again. I was like, whoever scores the next goal probably going to win. Uh, least score on a, a power uh, power play, of course, because why not? And then they, um, and then there was a couple lazy hooking calls from. Lazy. I know, and That's it's a like lazy call, and then of shore, like get short of the line if he's going to do that. <laughs> I know, he, like, but Oilers power play zero for two, least power play two for two. That's the difference in the game right there. I mean, uh, yeah. Dry Summer had that nice play on the shorthanded goal where he actually had that cut behind the net. That was pretty nice. Uh, bring Bouchard up. <laughs> bring in a puck moving defenseman. I don't oh, care what. One of my dude, mods, Ray Bro's gonna love that. Nurse is Nurse is like our puck moving defenseman, and he's he can't do anything defensively. He's not gonna get booted out of the lineup. But we need other guys that can move the puck. Russell Barry actually has been playing pretty good. He hasn't really had crazy turnovers, but he hasn't been. Uh, well, that's why I was telling you. Know. Jeff. It's like again, I call it how I see it. So when I see Oilers fans, like it's not even like a salty thing. It's more of just like I'm calling it how I see it. Both teams on Wednesday played like trash. So yes, a win is a win in a in, in just like a general sense, but like in a bigger perspective, winning a game like that should not just be like, oh, let's no. just keep it the same because we won a game. Dude. Like and for some reason everyone was so happy after the game. Tippett's like, oh we play this big defensive game all on the on the Oilers subreddit. Oh, I'll take wins like that every day. It's like those wins aren't gonna come every day. The only reason we won that is because the Leafs played like half a sliver shittier than we did. So yeah, I mean, exactly. so like, we gotta day, do something. Yeah, you'll take a win like that in the playoffs if you're gonna bounce back. But in the season yeah. when you're trying to work your way to that, but wait, wait. Even if you don't work your way to, that's just literally not making the playoffs. If you want to play like that and lose more games than winning, that is called not. I know. It's not. It's not a solution, dude. The lines need to be changed up. We need more puck movers on the back end. I mean, Larson playing awful this year. Uh, I mean, Clefbaum being gone, I knew it was going to hurt, but it's like, it's just like a knife, yeah. like every single game. And if we know Oilers much. Nation and Leafs Nation, and, and for your for this case, Oilers Nation, you know, they'll go from, okay, we'll take the win to now tonight, it's back to panic mode, right? Yeah, I mean, of course, that's like, uh, that's like friggin' Toronto sports, to be fair, and Oilers yeah. sports, oh. but you know what I mean? Yeah, like, Raptors, the, a lot Blue of the Day, Canadian Leafs, teams like, are, yeah. are always like that. That's, that's yeah. only Vancouver right now is in just absolute shutdown. <laughs> yeah, right now. I mean... Tonight was a better game for the Oilers, so I'm feeling better coming out of this series than I was out of the Montreal series. Oh, for sure. Both teams played better tonight. The Leafs like, were just, yeah, better And team. moving forward, I think we could beat some teams. And when we when the Habs games were played, I was like, who the heck are we going to beat? Uh, so there is that. I just think there needs to be some changes. And it can't be all excitement when you get one, like, shitty win over the Leafs. I mean, I'm happy we, tie, we split the series, but it is what it is, man. I think we play the Leafs again next week, so... We'll be back here, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, I, think, I think it's in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah so, it's in Edmonton. So positive Edmonton. notes to end. I'll, I'll just quickly say, again, on the dry settle goal, like I think both teams got maybe a couple lucky goals. Like I think great play by dry settle, obviously shorthanded, but Nylander with the giveaway, and then obviously the Larson giveaway on the play that Nylander makes a good play across the DC. But what is that Larson giveaway to Kerfoot? Like just disgusting. But let's end it off positive, Jeff. A couple yeah. positives for your Oilers. I'll go a couple positives for the Leafs. Okay. We'll All right. Koskinen, good game. I mean – I've been happy with Koskinen's play. He's not the problem right now. Um, the uh, forward, there was a higher tempo tonight, which I liked. 
they got more shots. They didn't have seven shots halfway through the game. And um, McDavid and Dreisaitl both scored. So if they can get going hot again, then I'm feeling a little better about our chances. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. And, I, and like I said, I think with Tippett, like, it just comes down to, you know what, McDavid and Dreisaitl, sometimes they're not going to be as hot, but the best you can do is set them up for success, both of them. Not just, okay, McDavid, let's just give him Nuge because we want to give the help to McDavid. No, just – give them what's working and Dreisaitl was having his best season of his career when he was with Nuge and Yamamoto. I was to go back to that, but for the Leafs, I'll say a uh, big positive is, I mean, better play from Marner. I think obviously you saw again, the Marner Tavares uh, pair and they were able to shut down McDavid for the most part, obviously still score a goal. And going back to Marner Tavares Hyman, I wonder even if you bring Matthews back, if you consider going back to maybe Matthews Nylander, but obviously Nylander has had, has hit, He's had his success this year, so I can't speak with Tavares. And then obviously the defense, I thought the Leafs played a solid defensive game, not anything great. I thought it's been kind of consistent over the last three games. And then obviously my big positive is Freddie Anderson uh, saved the game at many points in this game. Obviously I think the Leafs played a solid game. And at the end of the day for a game like this, I'm going, okay, the Leafs, they became the better team and won when it mattered and they're, they were on the power play and scored on the power play, and that was the difference in the game. So power play and Frederick Anderson, obviously the two difference makers uh, yes, for sir. this one. All right, Jeff, yeah. thanks again for coming no on, problem, guys. Man. Thanks for having Go me. Go hit them up. Hit the link in the description. Yes, boy. Sports, Sports Awards. Am. I'm on doing the road all to, – yes, on the road to 200. You got 200 it. 200 subs, yeah. Yes, and then, um, Yeah, football, basketball, hockey, and you do some baseball maybe. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. There's Blue Jays. There'll be baseball, MMA, you know, everything. I, uh, I get – but mostly hockey, you know, yeah. so here we go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one. We'll see you soon, and peace out. Yeah.